Hi, so today I'm looking at an Electrovoice ZLX15P amplifier. So this one's got the 15 inch woofer, the other one's got the 12 inch woofer. The full range speaker, they've got a tweeter and a woofer. So I feel sorry for this customer because A, his original board blew up. I'll show you this in a minute. This blew up. They don't make the circuit drawings available, which is childish because anyone with half a brain can, well, in fact, they wouldn't want to copy this. They'd pick a better amp and copy it. The customer, hi Ross, this belongs to Ross. He told me this is something like a thousand watt speaker. I took one look. I thought, now I'm familiar with the, like, the 450 Mackies, which are a quality speaker, version one and version two took a look at this I thought no way is this a thousand watts I was looking at it and I thought well it's class D because you can see the coils there take out the 400 kilohertz uh, from the base so that's class D I thought where are the FETs to drive the output these are probably rectifiers not looked thoroughly at the board yet but at a glance so small amount of smoothing, small capacitors, so cheap. Rectifiers down there, one switch mode power supply, so no PFC circuit. Regulators down here. Now this is the mains filter. Stop noise getting back out onto the mains. So his original board blew up. He bought this, put it on, and it overheats within five minutes. So it's poor show from Electrovoice. As proof, here's the two bits of paper supplied by Bosch. I don't know the connection between Electrovoice and Bosch, but he got that with one amplifier or the input and this with the other. He bought the input board as well because he damaged this connector that runs the LCD display. So he's something like 70 odd quid for this. And I see there's two microcontrollers down here, probably for the digital signal processing. So like the Mackie Thumps, with DSP, you can get a nice sound from them. No doubt about that. So over £70 for the input board, nearly £200 for this board. And I said to him straight away, I said, that's not a 1,000 watts. Too small, straight away. So whilst looking for the circuit drawing, which I've seen isn't available on the internet. I see some Russian guy has got, managed to get hold of a copy, but I don't necessarily need it to fix this switch mode power supply. So this is part of the owner's manual. So they're quoting the 12P and the 15. That's a frequency response, only for older people, because it goes up to 18 kilohertz and not 20. <laughs> Look, power rating. So I don't know the difference between the 12 and the 15 other than the size of the woofer. I thought, so the, the, rate of the power rating, 1,000 watts. Yeah, in what, on what planet do they get the 1,000 watts from? Why? Because last night he showed me this. I didn't have my glasses. Turned that over. I thought, hello. That looks awfully like the thump chip and I've dealt with these, these are a couple of hundred watts. Put my glasses on today, read the part number, let me have you, let me show you. So it's the bog standard TDA 8953, two times 210 watt class D power amplifier chip. That little device there. What, so that can give you a thousand watts? No, give you two times 210 watts. That's the supply voltage we're looking for from this switch mode power supply. Look, VDD, four, plus or minus 41 volts. I thought that's handy because this chip on the side, which you will have also seen on the 450 Maggies, they're, depending on the model, it's either 100 or 150 watt audio amplifier. So no doubt without looking at the wires, the circuit drawing, that's gonna be like a 100 watt tweeter maybe 150 but maybe uh, I'm saying a hundred hundred watt tweeter
plus or minus 210 watts. So that's mono 210, uh, 2 times mono 210, and they'll be using half the chip to drive the negative half cycle through here, and half the chip to drive the positive half cycle. And we would have a voltage if we could deliver the maximum power from that chip the signal would come up to plus and minus 41 volts so 80 volts peak to peak period where have they got the thousand watts because at best it's 420 watt for the base plus a hundred or so for the treble 500 watts per speaker period it's not a thousand watts so here's our baby 500 watt amplifier, 500 watt peak music power maximum. As I say, I'm assuming these are rectifiers down here. Had a look at these, I thought these must be the drivers for this transformer. No, they're not. Using these LM317s, which I don't know why they use the adjustable voltage regulators, because this is plus 15, so they could use a 15 volt regulator there plus 15, minus 15 over here, and this, I lifted up the glue, 3.3. So why use this 317 for 3.3 volts? Because you can get a 3.3 volt regulator in this package. Why do we want 3.3? You know I program microcontrollers. So this front end, an LCD, these are probably 3.3 volts. I've not looked at the make yet. Look like analog de devices. Well, that looks like an analog devices. This one here. And maybe this is a micro oh, ST. So ST microelectronics. This could be a microcontroller. And combined with that, that one there. This is our DSP, and it drives the LCD display too. It's a few op amps. So I think we've got the master volume, oh, which feels like a rotary encoder. I don't know if these, was it bass and treble? No, it's a line and mic. So push for DSP. Yeah, and that feels like a rotary encoder, so that's quite smart. And then line and mic level, input one, uh, and line and mic, input two. So presumably you adjust all the DSP on one knob. So that's a lot of faffing around. If you just want to in in you know, increase the bass or the treble or mid-range, you've got to go through the menu, find it. There's not individual, like the thump, they haven't got the individual you yeah, roll off, bass, treble, that sort of stuff. So in that sense, the thumb's better, although, yeah, to some people, they'll want the LCD display. So this brand new board, as I say, this overheats. That's a tiny, fragile ribbon cable running to the LCD display. So if these are all regulators, this must be the driver this must be the driver to get all our power from this one baby transformer and so again I don't have the circuit drawing because they're childish and they don't want to make it available but as I say if you're going to copy an amp you could either you, you could get the Mackie circuit drawing and copy their design for their base because they've used the same chip uh, and so we have many other manufacturers this treble chip, yeah, there's uh, there's already designs out there how to implement this chip for like bass or treble or both, you know, full because that's a full range audio chip. And again, you can get these to drive. You can bridge them so as a mono output or stereo output depending on the part number. And these are generally plus or minus 39 volts. So three regulators. So that's yeah, nothing. Charles Blow. Rectifiers down there, one little fat 
driving this, driving the whole speaker. And if we have a look down here, you can see these surface mount components. Uh, some of them are destroyed, the tracks are blown. So, you know, without even looking or without even testing, this FET has probably gone short circuit. There's a few SMD transistors, so that's probably an oscillator circuit and a FET driver. Yeah, these SMD transistors, probably an oscillator circuit and this FET driver. I'm guessing that's a FET driver to drive this FET. So, Charles Blade again. One oscillator to drive this to get our plus and minus 40, which will be used by the travel chip. You saw in the circuit drawing plus and minus 40 for this base chip. They're driving plus 40 and minus 40. So one's a positive signal and one's a negative going signal. So no circuit drawing, but as I say, Charles Blake, anyone with any experience on any class D amplifiers, yeah, you don't need the circuit drawing. And now because he was sold this that overheats, so I feel, feel sorry for him. They should really give him his money back or give him a circuit drawing so he can fix it, have it fixed. This is overheating, but I can now look at these surface mount resistors, establish what value they are and establish why this one's overheating and repair this at the same time. So to all you Electro Voice, ZLX 15 and 12B owners, you have not got a thousand watt amplifier. You've got roughly 500 watt amplifier. 500 watts peak to peak, not RMS. Sorry, but that's the truth. You've also bought inherent unreliability because looking for the circuit drawing, this area blows up all the time. So not only can you not get it repaired, really, because there's no circuit drawings, you have to throw the lot away and buy new boards. So having to replace the boards at 200 pound a shot, yeah, when you can get a 450 Mackie second hand for 200 quid, I wouldn't even bother getting a new board for 200 pound, I'd buy a Mackie. Uh, because Mackie do the sensible thing and the supply the circuit drawings so you can get them repaired cheaply and effectively when they fail, if they fail. So poor show on Electro Voice, no circuit drawings. Closely guarded secret is what I read on the internet. Closely guarded secret on their design. Really? What common garden base chip, common garden treble chip. I understand these speakers. I mean, they sound nice, apparently, but they're also expensive. If you want to spend the best part of a thousand pound on a 500 watt speaker, go ahead. If you don't, buy a bigger speaker. Buy a Mackie. Or a Yamaha. Yamaha DBR 10, 12 and 15. Superb speakers, superb quality, and you can get the circuit drawings. Thank you very much.